What's up guys? So we all know about the Colby Covington, Tyron Woodley, and Kamaru Usman triangle that's going on here. Where Colby was supposed to, or at least in many eyes, even said from the organization, he was going to get a title shot. Things have occurred where he couldn't take fights, he got injured, or he needed surgery and stuff like that. And there are rumors that he turned down Kamaru Usman when Usman was trying to call him out. Recently. So, ultimately, they went with Kamaru Usman to fight Tyron Woodley for the welterweight title on UFC 235 on March 2nd as a co-main event to John Jones versus Anthony Smith. And that is an important distinction business-wise because everybody knows Colby Covington versus Tyron Woodley is the biggest fight in the in the division, at least for Tyron Woodley right now, outside of guys like GSP. With the contenders, Colby versus Tyron is the biggest fight. And it can even be worthy of a main event. Now, the fact that they're doing Kamaru Usman versus Tarun Woodley, and they're tucking them in under the blanket that is John Jones versus anybody at this point, because Jones is a bigger star. He's always going to draw numbers. The Coleman event is not going to really matter. It's not going to impact the car too much, right? A Colby versus Tyron fight would most likely be a main event because it can draw eyes, especially from press conferences, especially from the build-up, the promos, all that stuff. It can draw in people. It would be the fight that would be kind of foolish not to make it a main event and get the rewards out of it, right? And when there is no car with John Jones or Conor McGregor or Khabib, Colby versus Tyron can fit in that spot as the main event, right? Not every car can have John Jones and Conor and Khabib. But throwing in Kamara Usman instead of Colby, it's not going to hurt or change the card under John Jones. So that is one thing to point out. Most people, casual fans, semi-casual fans, a lot of them don't really care what's not the main event, right? If it's the co-main event, if it's the first fight and fight pass, it's pretty much the same thing, right? It's just, it's pretty much a side dish. It comes with the meal, but they're tuning in for the meal. That is Jones versus anybody. So pointing this out, throwing Tyron Woodley and Kamaru Usman in there, they had a spot under John Jones. So it was a good spot to have that kind of fight. So they made it quickly. It's in less than two months. They're not going to lose anything directly with the Tyron and Kamaru fight. But the Colby fight is what most hardcores wanted, if not all hardcores wanted. So I saw other news while I was working on my weight cutting video from Chris Taylor who first reported that Colby Covington is going to be fighting, or it's in the works, that Colby is going to be fighting Darren Till in London on March 17th. Now coincidentally, it's the same month as Tyron versus Usman. So it tells me the winner of this fight is most likely going to get booked with the champion. Now the first thing I have to say is, the first thing that comes to my, to my mind is, man did the UFC take a big risk with this decision. The whole balance of the welterweight division relies on these two fights now. Because with this fight with Colby versus Darren Till, it dictates what is the future for the champion and for the division. Because Colby losing, you're going to have somewhat of an unreliable contender. When I say unreliable, I don't mean Darren Till himself is unreliable, I mean... The situations that come with him, such as weight cutting, coming to a title shot again this soon, all that sort of stuff, puts the entire division in limbo. And the reason I say that is, what comes next if Darren Till wins? What comes next? Does he fight Tyron Woodley again too soon? I believe it's still too soon. I think he needs more matchups, needs more experience in there. He beat one top contender and got a title shot and got smoked out there. Are we going to do that again two fights after that fight happened? Are we not going to learn from these kind of situations? where these younger fighters are getting thrown to the top guys way too quickly, right? It's almost like we're impatient for these young prospects to eventually be these stars, right? To beat these champions, to beat the top contenders. Darren Till already got a title shot in his last fight. That was after he beat Stephen Thompson in a very close fight, very controversial. And he got thrown up against Tom Worthy. And what happened was one of the most one-sided title fights in 2018, where Darren Till not only got beat on the ground, but he got beat on the feet as well. Okay, we've had this situation before. We had it with someone like Cody Garbrandt for an example, right? Cody Garbrandt is a better case because he did beat Dominic Cruz, but then he lost to TJ Dillashaw, and they threw him against TJ Dillashaw again, and he got beat even worse. And now they're throwing him at Pedro Munoz, which is actually what should be happening. This should have happened right after the first TJ fight. Cody should have fought someone like Pedro Munoz, someone in the mid ranking, somewhere around there, not fight the number one contender right after, and potentially get in line for another title shot. Darren Till's case is a little bit different. Because after fighting something Don Cerrone, a very good stylistic matchup for him, a striker with good ground game, but Darren Till's way bigger, of course, with good takedown defense. So he beats that guy. Then he fights Steven Thompson. And again, it's a very good stylistic matchup where he doesn't have to deal with the wrestling. And styles make fights. So he goes and has a competitive fight with Steven Thompson. And then they throw him against someone who is excellent wrestling and great striking. And even more important, 
championship experience against the best in the world. They threw him against that guy. A little bit too quick, I believe. Darren Till should have been tested a little bit more against other contenders before fighting the champion. That's what should be happening. You shouldn't be one top contender and now you're next for a title shot, right? So he goes and fights Tyron Woodley and that happens to him. And now they throw him against the top contender, the number one contender, Colby Covington, with another title shot on the horizon. Now this, I believe, is a good stylistic matchup because the striking is completely under Darren Till's control while having great takedown defense, which he even showed against someone like Tyron Woodley who had a very hard time taking him down and he tried. But Tyron Woodley has the threat of the striking as well as the wrestling especially with timing. Colby doesn't really have that too much. Colby doesn't have the timing. His is a lot more pressure and forcing opportunities on the opponent, which is a lot better for Darren Till to face. When you play a chess match with Darren Till, he automatically gets a lot less dangerous in exchanges because now he's looking for things a lot more rather than reacting constantly, right? We've seen it with Don Cerrone. We've seen it with many of his other opponents. When people force things on him, the timing and the power in his left hand is open and it's alive. When you sit back a little bit more like Stephen Thompson and Tyron Woodley, he has a lot harder of a time gauging that left hand of his, gauging the power shots. With Till's elusive footwork, them being both in southpaw opens up the jab of Darren Till and his ability to create and keep distance at all times on the opponent. The jab is going to help that, keeping Colby away from him. This can also allow him to seek out the left hand and gauge it a lot better than Tyron Woodley would probably be able to because Tyron being in the opposite stance, being orthodox on Colby's southpaw, the exchanges are going to be a little bit closer when it's combined with Colby's pressure. The jab is not going to be so much in play anymore. It's going to be a lot more reliant on the power hands of each other. And the biggest thing that can get Colby in on Tyron that won't allow him to do the same on Darren Till is the stances are going to be different. So the lead leg of Tyron Woodley is going to be a lot closer for the taking and vice versa for Darren Till. It's going to be a lot harder for Colby to get on the hips of Till and the footwork of Till is not going to do him any favors. So this, I believe, is a better stylistic matchup for him. But what happens after? Are we not going to learn from this? He has a big chance to be the number one contender again. Are they going to throw him at Tyron Woodley again? That would be a big mistake, I believe, not only for Darren Till's corner, but also for the organization. It'll be great for Tyron Woodley, of course. Same thing happens again. Now you potentially killed off a contender, a future contender, a prospect. And not only that, if Darren Till even beats Colby, he might even jump up and dip to middleweight. We don't even know his future in middleweight. He contemplated moving up after the Tom Woodley fight. And now he's fighting the number one contender. So you could potentially lose a top contender and a prospect, a young fighter, and cause him to move up another division, if not get a title shot again too soon. And you lose the big fight with Colby Covington because more people will be uninterested in it now. And because you potentially could lose Colby and Darren Till, who is next for Tyron Woodley? You would think, yeah, but there's probably other contenders, right? Who is there? If Kamar Usman loses, who is there? Ben Askren? He's not going to fight Tyron Woodley. Who else? Steven Thompson a third time? That's probably not going to happen. If Robbie Lawler beats Ben Askren, maybe throw him back there. There's not a whole lot going on in the order of the welterweight division from this kind of decision only if Darren Till beats Colby Covington which I believe is the most likely scenario. Now that's what happens if Darren Till wins. What if Colby Covington wins? Now this is when the risk goes in their favor. If Colby beats Darren Till and Tyron Woodley beats Kamar Usman which is a big if for both of those to happen. This Colby versus Tyron Woodley fight gets much bigger because now you have Colby Covington who just came off three contender wins. Damian Maya, Rafa Dos Anjos winning the interim belt and then Darren Till, everybody will respect Colby Covington and everybody will be a lot more interested in their matchup. It's a huge gamble though, it's a huge risk because you can lose the order of the welterweight division or you can create a huge interest in the next title fight. And it's most likely going to be one or the other. The other situation is going to be Kamar Usman beats Tyron Woodley. And then of course you would have to think Woodley gets a title shot. Again, the order of the welterweight division gets thrown off a little bit. Now the spotlight is all going to be on Kamar Usman and Woodley. For a little bit. So they're going to be fighting in March. Their next fight might be in the summer, early fall. So potentially three-fourths of the year is going to be on Kamar Usman and Tarn That's what the spotlight is going to be on. Colby is going to be in the sidelines for a while. There's a lot that can go wrong and there's some that can go right. And the things that can go right are going to be big. But the things that can go wrong are going to be a lot more... A lot more possible, I guess you would say. This is an excellent fight for Darren Till's side. Of course he's going to want to fight like this. Right? Of course, he's going to want Covington. Of course, he wants to be the number one contender. Of course, he wants the chips in his corner. And it's a good fight for him. It's a good stylistic matchup for him. But on Covington's side, this does not make sense. Now, I'm glad I commend him for saying that he will only take this fight if he gets championship pay. Which, 
I believe, and I think most of you would believe, he deserves it. He was the interim champion. He got it taken away from him. And it appears that he was ready to fight Tyron Woodley on March 2nd. The thing about Colby getting his tell shot taken away from him was a little bit strange. And now this is happening. And I believe it's a huge risk. The fight is most likely going to be interesting on both ends. But there's going to be a lot riding on these two fights. A lot riding of the future of the welterweight division. So stay tuned, guys. And I hope you guys enjoyed this. And if you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up. If you enjoyed my content, make sure to subscribe. Leave a comment below what are your guys' thoughts on all this. Do you guys agree? Do you guys agree that Colby should be getting a title shot? Do you agree with this fight against Darren Till? Of course, you're most likely going to be interested in it. But do you think it's the right move to make? And which fight would you have rather seen between these four fighters? And my wake up video, it's almost done. I've been working on it. So be lookout for that. And again, thank you guys so much for watching. And I'll see you in the next video.